So whenever you're lighting a scene, uh, very important is to know what's the mood of the scene that you're going after. So in our uh, main shot, I want it to be kind of dark, a little bit mysterious. Uh, so we're not gonna light, over light it, I would say too much. Uh, kind of pretty much gonna concentrate, make sure that the, our girl here, at the beginning especially, she's kind of more just backlit, so we know that she's there, but we don't see all the details. As we're moving closer, and she kind of faces the camera, that's when uh, we're gonna have our key light here off to the side, that's lighting just her left side of the face, which is where the, the bruises and, and the blood is. Now, that's why knowing what your framing and your camera position is gonna be, is very important because uh, without that, like for example, in this case, we wouldn't know how close we can get with this light uh, so that it's there lighting our scene, but it's just outside of the, the frame of, of our shot. Wow! Now, of course, I decided to shoot this whole thing on the anamorphic lenses. And part of the reason is because anamorphic lenses have those kind of, I would say, characteristics that make them look not so real, right? They kind of stretch out that image. I give those uh, vertically stretched bokeh and things like that. Uh, and those kind of, again, kind of dreamy looking uh, lens flares. And this scene is kind of about a girl that's basically, you know, gone a little bit a little bit delusional, so I want that kind of a look, and especially once the camera gets really close on her face, I want to be able to kind of have uh, like some nice uh, vertical bokeh there in the background. Uh, so we're actually placed some lights there, which are uh, little practicals, basically Christmas lights. Uh, and we're gonna have that visible in the shot. And, and uh, otherwise the rest of the shot is pretty fairly, you know, basically dark. We actually have some practicals that we're setting up here on the table. And then in the background, we have some practical lights to kind of lighting the little piano area there and where our victim is going to be. Uh, so again, always make sure that you know what's the, the mood of the scene and really decide also what's important to actually see in the shed and what you can hide. And you can do that also by, again, either shining a light on it or keeping it in the dark. Now in our story, we actually have a quick cutaway and I want that shot to be the exact opposite of our main setup. So we're gonna make it very bright, very happy. Now, when we're cutting to that shot, I wanna use some of those anamorphic characteristics and particularly the, the horizontal lens flares uh, as a sort of a, a transition to, to that shot. So what we're gonna do is, while we're going here in our main setup, we're gonna have uh, this light, which has a Fresnel lens on it, so it's very sharp and focused. And we're just gonna basically kind of move it and flash it the, the lens so we get that nice uh, anamorphic lens flare. And then again, we're gonna cut to our cutaway shot, which is gonna have very nice bright lighting. And when we cut back, uh, I think it's just gonna make a nicer transition. Uh, so that, that's where kind of you can play around with lighting and use it not just to actually light your scene, but kind of get creative with it. Uh, of course, once you're happy with your lights, then the last thing to do is to uh, you know, yell action and make sure you get a take that you're really happy with. Once you get that, then the rest of the stuff happens in uh, post-production and editing. Join me in part four where I show you how I edit and color grade the short film. <laughs>